What's the thinking from the UK? Well, I mean, it's it's a really tricky one because there's a, there's a few things that are all tied up together. So, as I said before, the the government, because it's a government, is trying to be nice to Trump and the incoming administration because they're going to have to work with them and they would like them not to abandon Ukraine and not to do various other things. Notably, um, you know, the UK has a lot to lose from a US government that imposes a lot of tariffs on on imports. Uh, that's a real concern. And already we've seen UK growth forecasts downgraded as a direct result of people's anticipation of what of what Trump will do. And that is clearly bad news both for the UK economy and and for the and for the incumbent UK government. So that, so there's a there's a big there's a big concern there. But that need to um sort of suck up to Trump does it there's two things about that that are quite difficult. One is that Trump really is very unpopular in the UK. Um, most people did not want to see him elected. Most people don't like him. Um, you know, for what it's worth, he would not win a UK election uh, by a long, long way. And that means that although there are perfectly sensible diplomatic reasons why, why the Labour government has to say the things that it's saying, it is a difficult tightrope for it to walk in terms of what the public thinks, because they would a lot of people would rather the prime minister was criticizing Donald Trump, which, you know, as things stand, he won't do. There may be times in the future where he he, he will need to on some issues, but fundamentally that's not going to be his stance. The other thing that's linked to that is that last time Trump was in office, Labour was in opposition and quite a long way from government and its politicians were much freer and also under a different leadership, which was temperamentally different from the current one. Labour politicians were much freer to say what they really thought about Donald Trump, and many of them did publicly, and we still know what they've said. Um, and that includes, um, most notoriously, the current Foreign Secretary, David Lammy, who said, and I don't have the quote in front of me, but said all sorts of disparaging things about Trump, which you know, which I, I personally wouldn't disagree with, actually, but which were not necessarily the best thing for a, for a foreign minister to say, given that he's he's got to lead those diplomatic relations. And that's something that I think we're going to speak during the um, the premium section about the new Conservative leader, Kemi uh, Badenoch. Um, but in her first Prime Minister's questions this week, she drew attention to some of those quotes and asked if there was going to be an apology for them. And um, you know, it's something that's going to keep running. To be fair to David Lammy, um, he has been part of quite significant outreach over, I think, a number of months to Trump and Trump's people. He, by all accounts, has a surprisingly decent relationship with uh, with JD Vance, or as good a relationship with JD Vance as a British Labour politician um, could could reasonably have. So, you know, Labour has made it really clear that you know there's no prospect of David Lammy getting fired or getting into trouble for this. But it just is a it's a, it's an extra dimension of a difficult tightrope to walk because the the reality is that he meant what he said then. He wasn't even wrong in what he said then, but now he's a diplomat and he's got to behave differently. So yeah, it's just a tricky tightrope for them to, to walk. Well, well, to be to be fair to when you said to be fair to David Lemmy, you didn't say the key thing, which is Trump has said much worse things about many folks. <laughs> 